Welcome back to Eureka Farms for episode four. With me, Mr. Sealy P. It's 10.55 and what am I up to next? I have invested, the money's gone back up again, as you've already seen, I've done two, three contracts. I've just taken on another fertilising contract on field six, which is a fair size. So having tried out some slurrying, having tried out with manure, I thought we'd give the Braindale K165 modded that's available on this map a go. This holds 250,000 litres, I think it is. I've got it with the spreader bar. I should have left it the other way around, shouldn't I? It's me trying to be smart, thinking oh, I'll get it the right way around for, for doing it. And using the multi silo shop by CNS Modding and Marie, which is cheap as chips, it's going to be expensive. 250,000 litres of fertiliser is not going to be cheap, but it's going to be way cheaper doing it from here. And that should last us a fair amount of time. I'm also curious to see how much it will use doing field six. I haven't done my harvest on my field seven. What am I doing? Let's line this up. There we go. Field seven, if you've watched the previous episodes, does have corn in it, which is there. What I am going to do, I was just going to do a corn harvest and store it. I'm actually going to silage harvest it and put it into the biogas plant. And then when field 10 is ready to harvest, I'm going to harvest that. That's going to go into the biogas plant. It will all be um, compacted. That will be covered. And that will be our first load of silage towards total mix ration. I have found a cow pasture slash barn that holds 500. So two of those potentially will take me up to my 1,000, which is what I'm aiming for on this, which will then be my biggest herd I've ever done on any of my Let's Plays. So anyway, regardless of that, don't want that, I want fertiliser. Let's see. What, 250,000 litres of fertiliser is going to cost from this silo. Now you can imagine, normally, 250,000 litres of fertiliser would cost an absolute bomb. It's another reason why this mod is so, so good. And again, this is available on this map. But this map only, this is available in the mod hub. That's just that's just there. You can get it. So this thing, whilst not having the ability to go any faster than normal, and we will go no, that's the one I want. Fertilize technology. The standard one is there. I mentioned this in the last episode. 18,950 litres, runs at 12 miles an hour, uh, with a 12 meter spread, lime and fertilizer. This one, 250,000 litres. Oh, it does run a bit faster. 15 miles an hour rather than 12. Nice. I mean, our money is going down, but it's, it's still not going to be anywhere near as bad. We're up to 140, 150,000 litres already. That's mad. It should last absolutely ages. So this will be for doing my fertiliser jobs. Obviously, it's for doing my fertilizer jobs. Oh, because I'm putting fertilizer in it. What I mean is, I'm probably not going to use this for liming. I would grab something else for doing a bit of liming, maybe. I, d I honestly don't know. Or I could get a second one of these. It's not expensive to buy. I say not expensive, not too expensive to buy. And because I'm doing all the faster um, farming and cultivating and plowing and harvesting, that means I can get way more contracts done way quicker, making more money faster. I have got a plan in mind as well for a total mixed ration production facility type situation. We're nearly there. What will this have cost us? <laughs> 20 grand, that's all. 20,000 for 250,000 litres of fertiliser. 20 grand, that's all. That is bonkers. And brilliant, and I love it. So with a combination of a bit of the uh, the mad mods from this map, and a fairly mad mod from the mod hub, we've got a nice combination. So what I'm going to do is do this contract on field six. Let's open that out. Now the question I suppose is, 
if you go to look at this on this map and go for the modded one, the options available on the modded one, you've got standard. Oh, there you go. I was thinking, why would you put the extension on? Because standard, like that, is 150,000 litres, with the extension is 250,000 litres. I was thinking, if it's 250,000 litres regardless, why do you need the extension? Because it adds 100,000 litres. Now, spread width. I need to get this right. It's always a little bit tricky. That might be a little bit too far over. Let's see what we're at. Oh no, that goes way wider than I thought. Brilliant. Okay. Let's go over a bit more then. Try about there. See how that goes. Probably could still go a little bit further, couldn't I? Yeah, so with this amount in here, I'm going to be able to do so many fields with this one load. And even if I don't do loads of fields at 20,000 for that much fertiliser, doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Now, as far as doing silage harvest on field 7 goes, um, the beauty of silage harvesting on this map will be that because the trailer sizes, while well, that's going, let's have a look at that. I've got my dump trailer, belly dump trailer, but I don't think I'm going to use that. What we have got towards the end here, where are we? The high capacity. So we've got the TAW 30 large capacity, 56 ground, 500,000 litres. We've got that one. Obviously, that one's the belly dump. I don't know if there's any ones we've got, yeah, from, from this map. So what I might do is get one of those because 500,000 litres of chaff means you can keep running for ages without having to disconnect and swap over, which is going to be absolutely brilliant. I could try it with the pace setter, but I don't know if it will spread into the back, and that would also require a dolly. So I might get one of these, the aggro liners, anyway. And as far as the forage harvesters goes, I'm going to lease one of the dual trailer ones. I might go for New Holland. I haven't used a New Holland for quite a while. I'm trying to think when I use the last one. 775 horsepower. I'll use a 9 metre header on that. Again, that doesn't go any faster, I don't think. 24, 24. I don't think the headers do either. Let's check the headers. Forage harvesters. I don't think there are any modded ones that come with this. I've just got the ones that I've got from the mod hub. Yeah, so I'll probably go for a Kemper, the SFI 900, which is 9 metre. So that will still only run at 6 miles an hour, but I won't need to stop and keep replacing every so often. Why has that... Whoa, okay, that's not good. I wonder why that overlapped. So has this got an extended spread width? That's a bit odd. If I stick that right down the middle of there. I'm assuming it's overlapped by half, has it? Pretty much. That's odd. I wonder why I did that. I'm going to keep an eye on that. It doesn't mean I can't leave it unattended. But we are using... Next to nothing. So it cost me in fertilise in, in manure and slurry to do field four for the har for the um, fertilising contract on there about sixteen grand, maybe a little bit over sixteen grand for the liquid for the slurry and the the manure. This cost twenty grand for all of this, and I've got a funny feeling this will do this field no problem at all, and we'll have loads left over. So what's the the best alternative the cheapest alternative this in combination with the multi silo shop if you're not using the multi silo shop it's going to cost you way way more for your fertilizer in which case then the, the figures then are a bit more skewed because whilst it will do a massive amount of coverage it's costing you way way more to buy it so I'd, yeah again it's up to you do it however you want 
I'm just showing you what I've done and where we're at. So this will finish and then I'm going to jump over and do that. Um, I did say I was going to put sugar cane in the ground in this episode. Potentially, what I'll do is grab the stuff for doing the silage harvest over there. If I get that all done fairly quickly, we'll repurpose the field. That will need ploughing because it's had corn in it which I can do fairly quickly, it's quite a small field. I'm just thinking that's a small-ish field, but we should get a, a ton of sugarcane off that. Because sugarcane yields incredibly well. So is this going to do the same thing again? Is it going to go halfway? Yeah, it looks like it. It's going to go down that line. I need to come over. Oh, that's weird. I wonder why it's doing that. So where do I need to come to? About there. Yep, that'll do. See you in a bit. I just can't help myself. <laughs> I'm back in that zone again. Contract fever. Uh, I've taken on a contract on field two for fertilising as well. So I'll do that. And then... We'll, we'll, we'll do the silage in, don't worry, we'll get onto it. I'm determined by the end of this episode I'm going to get sugarcane in that field, in field 7. I'm even considering, I might even plough it out a bit wider, make it a slightly bigger field, maybe? Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, the idea is a swirling, which is great. I like that, I'm trying to think ahead. So, as you've seen, by the payments, two fertilising contracts complete on two fairly large size fields. We're down to 244,203 litres. We used next to nothing, which is absolutely incredible for what I paid for that. Now on to something else, also incredible. I'm just, I'm, honestly, I'm buzzing. I, I'm loving every minute of doing all this. I made a mistake earlier. Ignore what I said. I'm going to do possibly one of the faster silage harvests I've ever done in so much as for this size field not obviously when I did Stone Valley that silage harvest covered most of the map and took hours and hours however there we go what I was going to show with a combination of the header height control for harvesters plus this map so I did go for the agriliner so that's a 500,000 litre trailer and I looked at the headers and said, oh, well, okay, that's still only going to go at six miles an hour. Of course it's not. What was I thinking? Under forage harvester headers, we've got the regular headers. So I've got the Kemper ones there. So I've got the nine metre one there that I've, I've just leased. But I haven't leased that one. If I keep going further along, part of the header height control for harvesters, we've got this one here, which has got the tool height control. So that will go at the speed of the harvester. So I'm going to be able to motor along at a real pace and possibly with the size of this field, not even full. Will I fill the trailer up? Will I get 500,000 litres off of this field? That's what I'm curious about. So let's start it up. And let's rock and roll. And honestly, this is nuts. I love it. I love it so much. So yeah, what are we up to? 26 mile an hour. I don't think anything was done to this field. I, can't, I just inherited this. When I started and we moved over here, this field was already sort of owned. I don't know, though. We're going to do all right. Let's just put it that way. And harvesting at this speed, because it's the harvester is part of this map as well, so it's got the attachment for any trailers. Normally, I would use a dolly. I don't have to use a dolly. I think what I'll do is do a strip that way and I'll come back for the other one on the turns. So it allows me to hook up whichever trailers I want and 500,000 litres is going to be absolutely brilliant which means potentially in one load, although look at this, I think I might get more than a full load. I can take it in one go, unload it into the bunker silo and then like I said when my grass field's done we're going to cut that we're going to collect that with a loading wagon. That will go to the bunker silo, the first cut. And that will be for silage. Second cut will be for hay. And then moving a little bit further down the line, 
we're then going to be looking at a total mix ration setup which I've been toying with and having a bit of a play around with on my test map so I'm doing research and development on here but obviously as I'm recording there's things I want to test which I don't want to use my finances that I've got on here so I've been doing a, little, a couple of little tests here and there trying a couple of things out aiming for the ultimate total mix ration mixer we'll see I don't know how it's going to pan out but you know it's just <laughs> this is bonkers now one thing is as you can probably tell the way this is hooked up that first axle is not touching the ground I don't think we've got an adjustment I'll just use my side panel I don't think no that's for the header height control that's for the bit of the front of the trailer yeah so I haven't got an adjustment to adjust the height of the trailer itself that's not a problem actually what I'm going to do I think I'm going to run a couple of strips this way which will make my turn easier I won't have to worry about the road or anything like that so I'll go that way Whoa, there we go right now a couple of people mentioned about me using the drawbar and said that they still use that knack of double clicking which I think is what DJ originally did the first video I saw of the fast farming was that double click so when you've got a piece of machinery like a cultivator that raises and lowers and a plow if you pressed X in quick succession it kind of raised it kind of lowered it and tricked it into a position that allowed you to go a lot faster than it should allow I haven't been able to get that to work in quite some time I thought that as a, as a kind of hack had been eradicated in one of the updates but someone did comment to say that they're still using that so I don't I don't know if that works great I just tend to use the drawbar one because I just I know it's a kind of almost foolproof system so what are we up to 150,000 litres so that's gone beyond anything the mod hub on console will provide at the moment we've got that what's that large trailer uh, the one that holds 105 thousand litres mine's gone blank so beyond that already this is awesome and the funny thing is as well is that change is, is as good as a rest and I've said before about that, you know, with the lockdown thing and just being able to do something a bit zangy, a bit bonkers and kind of free yourself up. I think my my creative juices, as it were, my um, the things that I usually do as storylines and narratives, and it, it gets it's hard. It's hard to keep up that momentum of doing stuff that's going to keep people interested. And I have found myself. I know it sounds really, this is going to sound really sad, but waking up in the morning or at night, waking up, having ideas of things thinking, oh, I could try this now, I could try that. What about, will this work? Will this combination work? Will that combination work? I don't know why I did it that way, but. And that kind of excitement is there. But the great thing about that is the knock on effect is my mind's then been thinking about six ashes and then thinking, oh, hang on a minute though. On Six Ashes, what about... And so, it's kind of freed my mind up a little bit, you know. To say that I would have got a little bit stagnant, maybe a little bit stale, over Christmas with the break and having some time with my family and doing things with them. And I did a few different videos, and, and I hope to still do them. But again, I'm back to that situation of what do I play? What do I record? What do I do videos on? I do want to do mod reviews on SnowRunner, and I did a couple. I do want to carry on doing my mod reviews on here. I do want to carry on doing my Let's Plays on here. I do want to do some rallying, but there's just not enough hours in the day, so I'll do what I can. So over Christmas, I had a bit of a break from the farming simulator stuff. I tried to keep the videos coming. Had a few days off here and there, and I got to a point where I was like, what do I do, you know? And that's why the Eureka Farms thing kind of came to the forefront, because I thought, you know what? I can still play the game just a little bit differently to how I have done in the past you know and I know it's not everyone's cup of tea I not I know not everyone's happy about it and I think yesterday uh, yesterday's video yeah it might be yesterday's video depends when I post this whether this gets posted Saturday or Sunday when I posted the video it had been up 
barely 30 seconds and already had a dislike. So nobody could have watched it at that point fully, but it's that thing of, oh, you know, another one on Eureka Farms is, is cheating and doing stuff you shouldn't be able to do. And again, I totally understand that. It's not for everyone. I, I totally see that. But in all honesty, I think it's great to just every now and again go back to that roots of just playing, just, you know, without the stress of worrying about storylines and narratives and seasons and precision farming and just to be able to come on and just have fun, you know. So thank you TNT, thank you DJ, all those guys, you know, there are so many of them out there doing amazing stuff, you know, all the guys I've done videos with before and, you know, golf cart jockeying, farmer min and DJ Goham and clutch simulations and sim for the nation and virtual farmer and there are so many guys out there putting out great, great content every single day. You know what? I am going to hit 500,000 litres, aren't I? We're going to hit 400 already. I didn't think I would feel this. That's, that's fantastic. It's a good problem to have. So, anyway, enough of me waffling. I'll see you in a minute. Probably when I've got 500,000 litres. I'll take it over in the forage harvester because the um, biogas plant is just over there, just behind us. Five hundred thousand litres. <laughs> Again, just saying that. Five hundred thousand litres in the trailer. Off to buy gas plant. To one of the bunker silos. So you put my own bunker silo down. Switch to that. Do that. That is crazy. And again, awesome at the same time. I left the header on simply because the weight of the uh, trailer was causing the front wheels to lift off the deck, so... No, when I did my that massive silage harvest on Stone Valley, and I did one recently on Six Ashes, and it was that I, I don't want to do silage in again. I don't want to do maize, corn, silage in. This has made it fun again. This is just <laughs> it makes it so much easier. Now, I, I again, I understand this is on this map. This is, you know, this is not going to be possible on every map. I, I really do understand that. And another reason why a lot of people are like, well, okay, that's all well and good, you're having a great old time, but you can only do it on that one. Now, there is Bucks County, uh, Blue Mountain Valley, isn't it? I think it's the other one. That's got a few bits and bobs on. And I'm sure this is not the last we're going to see from TNT modding of modded maps. I'm very curious to see how much grass we get off of Field 10 we do that. Which is going to be brilliant. Then when we come to compacting this, we get to use another cool piece of kit. And that's why I'm kind of that excitement's back again. That fun element of wow, you know what? I'm, I'm excited to use this bit of equipment. It's what I say whenever I do my mod reviews. A lot of the equipment we get when mods come out are different versions of the same equipment we have. And don't get me wrong, this is all you know. We have all of this equipment already in game. But having something that is a bit different, that does something a bit different, that acts in a different way, is what changes that element of, you know, of excitement and fun that the, that the game brings, you know. Right. Header open. Let's finish this off and see what we end up with. 
and then I need to prep this. I have got a ploughing contract underway at the moment over on field 5. I've got the TLX 2020. Oh, sorry. The, why do I apologise? <laughs> um, the TLX 2020 is ploughing on field 5. What happened there? Head is not down. There we go. That's better. So once that's done, we'll actually you know what we'll do. We'll check this while we're here because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so ploughing on field five is underway. That's a ploughing contract, so we'll get paid for that. We go across from here to soil composition. So it's going to need ploughing. Is it going to need liming? It's going to need liming as well. So I do both of those and get a fertilising on, and then we can get on to getting sugar cane into here as our next crop so what I'll do is with the ploughing and the fertilising you've seen me do that already liming we did a little bit didn't we the other day I'm going to have to think about how I go about that because my K165 Braidel has got 240,000 litres of fertiliser at the moment but like I said maybe it is worth me buying a second one of those because again, I know I can do a couple of contracts and make that money back, especially the harvest contracts, because they're paying out well, plus all the products I've got left over. And I have one for liming, one for fertilising. I know it seems a bit excessive, but... Excess is what this is all about. So I might do that. So where am I at? What's happening? Time for some more bonkers figures. I've just finished a fertilising contract on Field 4. And if you remember, I started the episode talking about the contract on Field 4 when I was filling up this fertiliser spreader. Field 4, the last time I fertilised it, with manure and slurry, cost me about 16 grand in manure and slurry just to do that field. Paid out 91 grand, which is absolutely brilliant. This fertiliser spreader that I filled up at the start of the episode with 250,000 litres cost me 20 grand to fill up. And I have so far just finished field four completely, which I'm now going to collect on. I'm going to pick up another fertiliser one on field six, except that one. If we go across to the field map, I have done fertilising on field six, field two and field four and I've used not even 13,000 litres of fertiliser so as I said earlier if you're going to be doing it this is on this map especially 
this is the one to use the Braydell K165 modded in conjunction with the multi shop silo by CNS modding and Marie this field field 7 which I did the silage harvest on has now been ploughed it has been extended if we look on the map again and we go to let's show me there we go so that's what it looks like normally if we go to no that one growth that's what I've ploughed out now so I've ploughed out further out to either end and out to the side so I've got much more room on here what I'm going to do now is put a second bit of fertiliser on so it'll be fully fertilised everything's ready and I can put my sugar cane into it on a larger scale than I had previously thought I would one thing I will say or another thing I will say I always say one thing another thing I will say workers are having a problem with these modded trailers I have bought another one hang on a second sorry weird break there just had a bit of a coughing fit um, yeah I bought a second one of these Braidel six ones no one six fives K one six fives um, for the liming as you can see I've got lime on the ground so I bought a second one because why not and here's another figure for you from the multi shop silo I'm gonna keep saying it from CNS modding Anne Marie I bought 250,000 litres of lime and it cost me a whopping 2,812. What are we on? Pounds at the moment. I do have this on dollars, but because I bounce between six ashes and this. Um, yeah, 2,812 for 250,000 litres of lime, of which I've barely used any. So I've got my fertiliser spreader and my lime spreader, which will both last absolutely ages, cheap as chips. I mean, let's be honest, after a couple of fertilising jobs, this and the other one are paid for. Done. I, you know, And the fertiliser and the lime. All paid for, all covered, all straight away. Life is good. So when I see you again... We are going to be putting sugar cane in the ground. That's how we're going to probably end this episode, I guess. That's what I said I was going to do. So we will lease, uh, don't go for a different planter, maybe a different cedar. And we'll stick some down. I was very close. When I was ploughing down the side there, I suddenly realised there are those two signs there. Well, I'm not sure what they are. I came so close to hitting those, but we're all good. So once this is done, I've got another fertilising job I will jump on. Yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, that's what I started to say, didn't I? The, uh, the, the workers aren't liking these, and what they're doing is overlapping. So as we saw earlier, and I said I wasn't sure, the lime spreading did exactly the same thing. I need to back up. So that rather than go the full width ready for the next one... Nope, it didn't work. It's the only problem with extending the fields and doing things like that. Yeah, so rather than going a full one round, it's turning and going up halfway. I'm not sure why it's doing it, but it just means in some of the bigger fields, I'm having to keep an eye on the fertiliser and stuff. So I'm having to, when it gets to the end of the row, turn it myself. But again, the sort of money I'm earning and the fact I'm not having to go backwards and forwards and buy fertiliser and buy lime, I don't mind. It doesn't bother me. There's not that constant backwards and forwards. It's all good. Big toys. That's what we like. I'm loving the TLX 2020. Just the look of it, with all the various different updates it's had with the beaded ties and Anyway, uh, as you've seen again, a few more contracts are done. Money's gone up just a little bit. Uh, it's time to put sugar cane in that field. And as I mentioned, if you watched my map tour when Eureka Farms came out, and I mentioned when I got the planter, I'm trying to think, this is leased, by the way, I haven't bought this yet. I probably am going to buy one. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? 
if we go across the seeders and planters, on this map specifically, if we go across each seeder and planter, and we get to ones where it shows you the entire row, they have been amended on this map to do everything. There were a couple that did, which was absolutely fantastic already, but on this map, this will do your regular crops, your, your planter crops, it will do your seeder crops, it will also do um, potatoes, sugar cane, all the stuff it's not supposed to be able to do. Now, why is that a good thing? Especially if we're doing sugarcane and potatoes. Because, if I come back out and we go up to... Where's our potato technology? This is our potato technology. So, for planting potatoes, usually we've got that one, the Grimmer GL420 or the GL860. That will do three metres. That will do six metres wide. You can put seed in there or potatoes. If you want to use potatoes, you can, absolutely. If you're new to the game, if you don't want to buy seed and you've got potatoes left over from a previous crop, if you're doing potatoes, you can put potatoes in it and seed those, which is absolutely great. You can plant those. So those are the two options for doing potatoes. As far as sugarcane technology goes, our planters are a single row billet planter, which will do a one metre seed, well, plant. You've got the TT8022 driveless, does one metre, and then you've got the two row billet planter, which will do two metres wide. Now you can buy sugar cane pallets for doing those, which is absolutely fine. But the one thing with sugar cane, well, two things, two reasons why people often steer clear. One, it takes absolutely ages to plant an entire field of sugar cane, and then harvesting takes absolutely ages to do. So on this map, that has been adjusted. And if I go down to cedars, you'll see as well, if I go across, same with the cedars, it's been adjusted on this map, so you can do potatoes, you can do sugar cane. You can have a bit of a fiddle around with it. Well, since I've already got the planter, I'm going to hook up using the Roadrunner again, because I want the front three-point link. And like I said, the, the TLX hasn't got a three-point link on the front. As you've seen with the ploughing as well earlier, I meant to mention that, when I did the ploughing originally, you know, I'd done up to 73 miles an hour using this. That one, the TLX, I got up to 86 miles an hour ploughing. <laughs> ah, right. Let's look that up. How much have we got left in that? Not a huge amount. So at the moment, that's on corn. Let's put that on. Now this is going to use a lot of seed to do this because we're going from a one meter planter for sugarcane or a two meter planter out to a, what's this one 18.2 to an 18.2 meter planter so yeah it goes without saying we are going to eat through the seed but again if you can get your seed nice and cheap that's okay which is where the silo comes in again so let's put some more seed in that 135, that's a lot of money, I can't, I'm not sure I can afford that. Right, using my side panel, uh, I still have people asking again, I have no problem answering the question, because you may be new and you may not know what I'm doing or how I go about doing it. I have a Logitech heavy equipment side panel that's designed to be used for PC, and on PC is programmable, so you can program all the buttons, but it works on PS4, PS4 Pro and it is working on my PS5 as well so I've got that plugged into my PS5 it always used to be plugged into my PS4 Pro so I can change by pressing button 9 my C type without going into any menus I know you can do it from the controller but there's a whole load of other button options uh, I want sugar cane don't I do I go past it already probably oh uh, can't go back that's the same problem Go slowly, Mr. Silly P. Sugar cane, there we go. So, we are going to put sugar cane in the ground. Oh, let's close that. And, oh, hang on a minute. We just realised what I forgot to do. If I want to do this quickly. I need my trailed lifter. Now, weirdly... Oh, I'm going to mention this. I did say about getting the palleted front lifter three-point link by Pepe978 because it will hook up to this. It did hook up to it. It sat fairly low. I thought, fantastic. 
So what I did then was put the drawbar, that little thing there, onto that. But, for some reason, the cedar planter kept detaching. It kept coming away from it. Like every single turn, it, it didn't matter if I was on a hill, it just did not like it. As soon as I put it back on the trailed lifter, it worked fine. So I'm not quite sure. It may be a bit of trial and error with different vehicles, different attachments, that kind of thing. It will depend if you're, if the map you're on is particularly hilly. Eureka Farms is perfectly suited for all this kind of stuff as well anyway, because it's flat as a pancake, you know. Are all these things going to work as effectively on hilly terrain? Maybe not. You may need to go a little bit slower. But the way I look at it is, if you can go a little bit faster than the regular seeding, planting, ploughing, cultivating speeds, then it's a win. Because you're doing it quicker than you would do normally. So, if you can't go the maximum speed you want to get, that's not ideal but it's still better to be able to go faster than not at all oh I thought it was going to go the other way <laughs> why am I so convinced it was going to turn right never mind right so let's open this up try and line up as best I can I'm going to do a strip across this way first and th this is what I mean with sugarcane you it is horrifying how quickly this is going to go down but it's cheap to buy, so I don't really mind. Turn it on, drop it down. I've missed a little bit of the corner, I'll come back for that. Let's speed up a bit. So we are putting sugarcane in the ground. At 18.2 metres wide, rather than one or two metres wide. We are also putting in the ground at 22, I think it's all got up to 24, won't it? 26, oh no, we're going a bit faster, that's alright. At quite a pace, which is also brilliant, now this is where I might have an issue, because I ploughed out, but I think I might have ploughed a little bit too far. It allowed me to, but I think it's bordering on the limit of my what ground I owe, owe, own. So it won't let me seed, or it probably won't let me harvest either. So I've got to be careful where I actually go to. But as you can see, we've used a ton of it already. And that is another reason why doing sugarcane is often a, a trickier prospect and people don't do it in larger quantities generally speaking because of the resources required the time taken that we've got through 8,000 litres of seed <laughs> already that's terrifying <laughs> so yeah without having an incredibly cheap source of seed it can get um, very expensive but from a lot of people that have done a bit more research into this than I have sugarcane is one of the most productive crops and pays out the most now when you look at it on the screen when you go into the menu and we go across we go and find our sugarcane sugarcane is paying out at the moment the maximum it's paying out the transport company is 277 for a thousand so you think to yourself immediately that's not that's awful <laughs> cotton pays out way more and if we go across soybeans paying out 1421 at one of the places so how can it be the thing with the sugarcane is you get so much of it it is it ridiculously high yielding and it's always been that that thing of which came first, chicken or the egg. It's incredibly high yielding, and because it is, it forces the price down, because you get so much of it, that's why it's cheap. Or it's cheap, or the other way around. Whichever, you know, it's that kind of, it's cheap because there's a lot of it, there's a lot of it because it's cheap, I don't, you know. What am I doing? Front one, open tank, fill up, seed. Close that. We'll go back to that open the rear tanks so as you can imagine I am going to be back with some forwards quite a bit but when we're done and when we get round to it the sugar cane we're going to get off this field is going to be crazy and it will mean as well that I will be able to then start one of my factories because one of my factories takes sugar cane the sugar one doesn't it I mean yeah the sugar cane 
the sugar factory take sugar cane. Just kind of an obvious one. But again, that just cost me what? Not even 400 was it for all of that? I wasn't even looking at the prices. That's how blase I've got about buying my seed from that silo. And I think now I'm regretting. <laughs> I'm just looking at this thinking, oh yeah, but again, isn't it weird how your mind reverts a type? For doing sugarcane, this is a big field. I've done tiny fields before and got huge amounts off it. I'm looking at this field thinking, I really shouldn't have done it this big. I shouldn't have extended the field. This is going to be ridiculous. But not so, because we've got a sugarcane harvester that will harvest really, really quickly. So it doesn't matter. I've got to stop with my regular head on and I've got to put my Goham Industries research and development head on. I just have to remember that. So anyway, from here, I'm going to continue. We're going to get sugarcane in the ground. This is all done now. So this is ploughed, limed, fertilised twice. Turn that on, drop it down. Let's get cracking. So next time you see me, this will be done and it should be growing, which is all very lovely. And then what's next on the horizon? Oh, hopefully grass. What time is it now? The grass won't be ready till tomorrow. Grass work needs to be done. Uh, what else? When the grass work is done, there'll be some compacting using some fancy gear. Well, not fancy, but it's going to make my life a lot easier. Oh, I can't believe how quickly that's gone down. That is so scary. <laughs> I haven't even done a complete circuit of the field yet. And I've already nearly used 16,000 litres of seed. I'm just trying to think if there's another way of doing this with a different vehicle that I could have maybe a seed, a larger seed tender with it maybe. Oh, hang on a minute. Has this got... No, it hasn't. There's steps on the back, isn't it? Let me just have a quick check. No, that's steps. I thought it was a... I thought maybe I could attach a little seed cart, seed tender on the back. But not so. Right, let's drop that down and let's get this bit done. It's going to go so fast. Right. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I'm enjoying it. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.